Hello Brain Shakers, welcome to the Brain Shakers Academy. In today's session we're going to be looking at the Renault system. Now why is the Renault system an important system to understand? It is because the Renault system plays key role in maintaining body homeostasis. Now it regulates a number of processes within the body and that is why an understanding of the Renault system is very important. Now in the next few topics we're going to be looking at topics that relate to the Renault system and that is is why a brief introduction into the Renault system is going to create a firm foundation for the understanding of the next topic. Now let's quickly dive into today's session and understand what the Renault system is all about. Now I have drawn a diagram here that is going to help us to understand the structures and the parts that form mainly the Renault system. Now if you look at the diagram on the far left here, you understand that there is a small structure on top of this beanie shaped structure and this part here is a gland that we refer to as the supra renal gland also referred to as the adrenal gland. Now this adrenal gland is an important gland. Why? Because it also plays a key role in the maintenance of blood pressure. You have aldosterone coming from there, you have epinephrine coming from there, you have cortisol coming from there. So we will look into more detail of the adrenal gland when we come to look at the endocrine system and its various glands. Now, after the adrenal gland, you have this structure here, which is a bean-shaped structure, is what we're going to be referring to as the kidney. So this is the main structure here. This is a kidney. Now, you notice that there is one kidney drawn here, but these are two kidneys. So you have one on the right and you have another one also emanating from the left. And important also to make mention is that these kidneys are retro peritoneal, meaning that they are going all the way behind the peritoneum and their location in terms of a structure or in relation to the vertebrae will be around T12 to about L3, that is the thoracic uh, vertebrae number 12 to about the third lumbar vertebrae and you're going to find them around that region. So if you have your abdominal trunk there, you have your umbilicus there. You're going to find them in the upper abdominal quadrants. So when you find them in the upper abdominal quadrants, you also find that the apex or the top or superior pole of that kidney would then be pointing more towards the spine, but their location is around T12 to around L3. Now that is the kidney there and we're going to quickly zoom into that kidney in a little while. Now when you look at the kidney, the kidney is also supplied with blood and the blood that comes to the kidney is a branch that is emanating from the descending iota which is the abdominal iota in that sense and so you find that this red portion is what you're going to call the red artery. And the blue one in the same vein that the blood that comes through to the kidney will then get its way out from the kidney because it needs to be oxygenated in some way. So it has to revert back to the rest of circulation. So you end up having the renal vein. So that's your renal vein there. And then you have another duct that is actually emanating from the helum of the kidney. So this portion, the invaginated portion of the kidney in a bean is what we refer to as a helum. So you have the helum here. Now from the helum, you have three important structures that are emanating from there. You have the renal artery on the posterior aspect. Anteriorly, you have the renal vein and Inferiorly here, you're going to have what we call the ureters. Now, this is the ureter. Now, the role of the ureter is obviously once the urine has then been formed within the kidney here, it will then get its way through the ureter and travel through the ureter to the bladder. So here you're going to find that you have the bladder and from the bladder it gets its way out to the external environment through the urethra. So that is going to then 
be your, your restaurant. Now, if we were to quickly zoom into this structure and look at this particular structure here and have a quick understanding of what it is, this is exactly what we're going to be looking at. Now, we are going to look at the microscopic structure of the kidney itself. So before we then get to the inner part or inner aspects of the kidney, it is also important to understand that there are certain layers that we are going to encounter before we get to the inner aspect. So there is this line here which comes on the top that represents what we are going to call a renal capsule. So the kidney itself is encapsulated into some layer on top and that is the renal capsule. Before we get to even the cortex of the renal system or of the kidney, you have the fascia there and you have fat as well, then you get to the renal cortex. Now, the kidney has two important layers. So the two important layers here is that this part, the whiter part, is what we are going to call the renal cortex. And then this part here, which is brownie, is what is going to then be referred to as the renal medulla or the medulla of the uh, kidneys. Now, if you look at this, we did make mention that you have your renal artery here, obviously, and you also have your renal vein and you have your ureters on this other end. Now, these blue and red spots will represent the vessels that are actually coming into the kidney and also draining from the kidney to take that supply back to the inferior vena cover, which will then travel to the right atrium and then will be pumped to the lungs for oxygenation and then revert back to the kidney. Now you have these brownish parts here. Now these folds that appear in here are what we call the renal pyramids. Now the renal pyramids are important parts of the kidneys because they house the most functional units of the kidneys which we are then going to call the nephrons. So that is where you're going to find the nephrons and these nephrons are the ones that are important in the filtration of the blood that circulates through the kidney to then form the urine that is going to travel all the way to the bladder and then get to the external environment. Now, I look at the nephrons in a more detailed aspect so we can also understand what the nephrons are and also understand the process of urine formation. So make sure you are subscribed to the YouTube channel so you don't miss that. And remember to hit the notification button as well so you don't miss and you're one of the first people to see that. Um, video on our YouTube channel. Now, if you look at the pyramids here, the pyramids have what we refer to as a pyramid base. So the base is towards the cortex. So the wider part here from this end to this end is what we would be calling the base. And the upper part here is what we are going to call the apex. So it has a base and it has an apex. Now the apex has openings. So you will find that you have a pyramid like this. This will obviously form the base and this here is going to form the apex. Now why is the apex important? Because on the apex there you're going to find their openings. Now these openings are there to empty once you find that the nephrons in here have filtered the blood and have the urine within them then they send that urine through the collecting duct it will then travel to these pores or openings so that it can open into the minor calyxes here so you have calyces there so when it opens into there, it means that the minor calyces then get that and take it into the major calyces and then goes into the ureter. Now, the openings or the pores here are what we call area cribrosa. Okay, very important structure there to allow the movement of that filtered uh, you, uh, collection or the filter uh, for the filtrate that is going to come out from the blood there and then now is being collected as urine will come 
into the area cribrosa. Now, when you look at the um, microstructure also of the collecting ducts, you find that you have collecting ducts that come in and bringing in their urine, bringing in the urine. So this now forms a major collecting duct before you get to the area cribrosa. So if this is the area cribrosa here, which is the main opening into the minor calyx, this is going to be called a duct of Bellini. Okay, so the collecting duct which is going to bring everything to the area cribrosa will be called a duct of Bellini. Now, when you have these renal pyramids, the cortex itself will then invaginate in between those renal pyramids. And this will then be called the renal columns. So these now are going to form renal columns. Okay, so meaning that they're going to separate those pyramids. And these pyramids, you have approximately eight to about 18 of those pyramids that contain the nephrons in there that will then be filtering the blood that is circulating within the kidney and getting it into the minor calyx and then into the major calyx. Now you may have two to three calyxes, which is the major calyx. So you may have a superior one, then you have a medial one, and then you have the last one here, which is going to be the inferior. So you may have at least about three of those major calyxes, which will then again mage and send that urine into the renal pelvis just round here, and then straight into the ureter, and then the ureter will bring that urine all the way down into the bladder for storage before you can actually empty your bladder and get that urine all the way out. So basically that is the microscopic view of what the kidney is. Now, this kidney is very important because it plays a number of functions. Now, I look at the functions of the kidney in yet another video, and we also look at the formation of urine and the main part that forms the urine or filters the blood that circulates within the renal system or the kidneys, that is the nephron, in yet another video. Now, if you found particularly this video, interesting and insightful in understanding briefly what the renal system is all about, then don't hesitate in giving this video a thumbs up, drop me comments in the comments section, and also head on to the YouTube channel and subscribe. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.